YouTube. It's the second son here. We're back with another video. Um, today I got a very special effect to show you. We got the data moshing effect. Um, you know, the effect that was popularized by ASAP Rocky when he dropped the Lamborghini High uh, music video. You know, the cool ass effect that like glitches everything you see on screen and kind of destroys the image and makes it all warped. And then you can use it for transition. You can use it for effects. Um, it's a really dope effect. Um, my favorite videographer slash one of my favorite YouTubers, Max Novak, showed me how to do this um, a couple years back. But that was whack when I had a Windows to add it on. And now I, I'm operating with the Mac. I'm operating with the Mac-tastic here. Um, and his method didn't exactly show me how to do it for Mac. So I figured it out. Um, and so today I want to share that knowledge with you. This is the super easy Avidamux data moshing guide. All you need is Premiere Pro. Um, and, uh, and a couple other things that are all absolutely free, absolutely easy. Um, so yeah, let's get right into it. But before we get into it, please make sure to like and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram. Um, follow me on Facebook. I'm gonna link to Facebook down in the description and yeah, comment what you want next. All right, let's get it. So first things first, here we are, um, on, oh shoot, wrong website. So first things first, what you want to do is to download Evidimux. If you're on Windows, I'm going to take you on uh, um, through how to how to download Evidimux and get it on your computer. And if on if you're on Mac, which is Loki, what this video is more specifically tailored to, um, which is a little harder to get, I'm going to walk you through that too. But first, super easy for Windows. I'm going to link it down in the description. You follow the link. Um, it's going to take you down here. And what you want to what you're going to want to do is click on Evidimux 2.5.6. Now, keep in mind that to do this data mosh, you need exactly a Vitamux 2.5.6. So if you have a Vitamux and it's ever updated or you have a newer version, come back to this video, come back and then um, click on the link in my description and it will send you a link to a Vitamux 2.5.6. So here we have a Vitamux 2.5.6. Um, win Windows 64 zip. Um, you click download. And it'll take you to a page that allows you to download it, intended audience, Windows, yada, yada, yada. Um, and it's actually gone into my downloads, as you can see right here. Um, I have a Mac, so there's really no point in me downloading it. However, once you download it, once you download it, all you need to do is install it and you'll be good to go. For Mac users, it's going to be a little bit more complex, but it's going to get you the same place. And it's going to take a little longer to download a Vitamux, but once you've got it, I promise you'll be good to go. So... For Mac users, I'm going to link this website in the description. This is how I downloaded it, installing a Vitamux 2.5.6 on a Mac. Um, essentially, what you're going to need to do um, is to download the 2.5.6 Windows 64 version on your Mac, right? That's step one. As it says right here, download a Vitamux 2.5.6. Then you go into System Preferences, um, and you go into New Terminal at Folder. Right, or you can just open terminal in your system preferences um, and then disable gatekeeper by typing this right and then it goes down the list um, you're gonna need to install gatekeeper uh, I mean not gatekeeper you're gonna need to install homebrew and then from homebrew you're gonna need to install wine um, and the full instructions is here I use this uh, the full instructions got me exactly where I need to go and by the end of it I had a Vitamux on my computer so I'm gonna link this down in the description this is the key to 2021 still being able to use a Vitamux on the Mac so I really, I highly, highly, highly suggest um, following this these directions to getting a, a Vitamux for Windows on your Mac PC in order to do this data mosh. So once you've downloaded all that, you're gonna want to go into Premiere Pro. Um, you see your timeline right here. Um, I've got four clips. Get the four, get the clips that you want to use to data mosh. Get them nice and ready to go. These are mine. Um, they're nice and pretty, as you can see. Um, this is a music video I did not long ago. What you want, especially for data moshing, is that you want um, you want the videos to have a lot of movement. It works best when the videos have heavy movement that you can use to sort of distort the video and, and distort the pixels and, and, and make it look really trippy. Um, so I have this four right here, which means there's gonna be three transitions. What you wanna do is you wanna press I on your keyboard here and then press O here. All right, and then you're gonna go to file and then you're gonna go to export and then you go to media. Now export the video wherever you need it to go. 
um, change the output name, change the uh, uh, where you want to send it to. Uh, I always use the, I mean, usually I use the YouTube 216, 216, 4K Ultra, yada, yada, yada. But I made a uh, separate music video uh, preset that gets mine in the highest quality possible. Um, and then you just want to press export. When you've got your footage good and ready to go, then you're going to want to open a Vitamux up. So when you open a Vitamux, um, uh, let me just press no. When you open up a Vitamux, you're going to want to go to this button here, this folder open here. Um, you're going to want to find the video that you just exported from Premiere Pro. For Mac users, I would recommend exporting it to the desktop because um, it looks really weird on a Mac. It looks like an old di olden days window. So I recommend um, because it doesn't have, I exported it into my movies, didn't have movies. So I had to export it to my desktop. Um, there it is, right? C0390. So if we just open that, just press no. Anything, any prompt you see, just press no. Press no for everything. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure that you change. You want to go to video here, this drop down menu, and make sure that you change this to MPG, MPEG 4 ASP XVID. Then you're going to want to go to configure, and then you're going to want to go to frame. And you wanna, you're going to want to uh, maximum iframe interval. You want to put just 99999 throughout the whole screen. Press OK. Then you're going to want to come back here again and then change it to copy. And then press save. Save video. So you want to name it something like data mosh video. Um, and you want to save it to pretty much the same place that you saved to the uh, saved it to your last video. So it's already been saved. I'm just going to go open up. Here it is. You see data mosh video. You're going to want to open it up. Press no. Um, press no. And here you go. So as soon as you get here, you know you're on the right track. Um, now you have these things called P frames, B frames, and I frames. The way to get the data mosh working, the way to get the real cool data mosh look is to, is to fuck with the I frames by deleting them. So you can do that by coming down here on your keyboard and pressing the up key or just using this these little double arrows to press once to find the first iframe. So once you have the first iframe, I'm going to scrub around. I'm not going to delete that iframe. But once you have the iframe that you want to use, you're going to want to press A here um, and then press the right arrow key, the right arrow key, and then press B. And you're going to want to press delete. Delete doesn't work when you're on a Mac, so the best way to do it is just edit, delete, right? Then you want to press up to find your next iframe, I, iframe, you're going to press A, dash, B, and then file, or edit, and delete. For the next iframe, you just do the same thing. All right, what you're going to want to do now, once you're done deleting as many iframes as you felt like deleting, you're going to want to go here um, and you're just going to want to save it. So data mosh video to video. So once you've saved it here, it's done saving. That's good to go. Now you can close the Vitamix. And since it saves in a um, weird, uh, weird format. It saves and in, uh, got it. Get info. I think my things, my, my lap, my laptop sees it as a text edit. That's kind of crazy. But since it saves in that, um, you're going to want to use a VLC player to fix the video. Um, and I will also link down a VLC player. This is a VLC player I use. I'll also link this down. You can also find the version for Mac here. Um, if you just click other systems and then Mac OS X, um, download the VLC player to take a look at it. I already have the VLC player. Um, I want to skip that step and just look at it. Um, once you have, once you see it from a video VLC player, then you can go and convert it. So here's the online converter. I'm just going to go straight to converting it cause I want to see it in MP4 format. Um, this video turned out really awful. So I'm going to show you one that turned out really well before, um, here it is. I left the audio on this one on accident. So I'm going to show you. This is the one I did the other day that turned out really well. The first one I just did now turned out terrible. But it's the same concept. It's just, you know, it's just like a catch-22 of when you're going to do. So here it is. So 
So there it is. That was the full data mosh video. Like and subscribe. Um, thanks for watching. Please make sure to comment what you want to see next. Um, if you have any questions, just comment. I'm going to put all the links in the description. And yeah, I'll see y'all next time.